All right, all right. So I believe it's the time for our next session, and I'm absolutely delighted to invite to the stage our next spe speaker, Robert Roos. So please give him a warm welcome. Hi, Robert. How are you doing today? Are you enjoying so far? Yeah, fine, thank you. Okay, that's good to hear. Well, with no further delay, please go yes, ahead. Thank you. I will give the stage to you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm here to talk about making your Drupal site sustainable. I'm going to give some tips and tricks, but first a little bit about me. So I'm Robert Rose, or Robert Roos, it's just a little bit cooler. And I've been a web designer since 2004. This is a photo of me making my first website. And the term web designer isn't really used anymore because lately we have designers, we have front-end developers. Uh, but being a web designer um, made, forced me to design and build my own websites. Uh, first with Dreamweaver, uh, then with uh, Joomla, uh, and then, of course, with Drupal. And Drupal enabled me to do things which I couldn't do with other websites or other tools. So I could use views, rules, organic groups, and I could create communities, portals, uh, magazine websites. So I, I, I really love Drupal, and I'm glad I can give something back now by be giving this presentation. Um, currently, I'm a design lead uh, at FEO, or uh, Enterprise Agency for the Netherlands. And I'm working on a design system. But I'm here to talk about something else. The goal of my presentation is to create awareness, because I've been building sites for almost 20 years now, but just recently I learned that it had a big impact on the environment, the way you build your website, you design your websites. So that's the first thing I want to do here. Uh, the next thing is to share some tips, uh, tricks, specific Drupal things, uh, what you can do to reduce the impact of your own Drupal site. Because if the internet were a country, it would be the sixth most polluting country. Of course, we get to the United States, followed by China, Russia, Germany, United Kingdom, then there's the internet just above Japan and India. So the impact is huge, but it's not something you think about when you're, uh, you're surfing the web. So what is it about? It's mostly about how heavy a uh, website page is. So how many kilobytes is the page load? And why it does sending and receiving data just uses up energy. It costs electricity, and electricity uh, pollutes CO2. It also affects the surface. The surface needs to be uh, also, also need energy, also need electricity. And it also uh, do affects the devices watching the site or using the site or using the app. And it's also the energy use is a thing, but also the wear of a device. So if you make a very uh, website which uses a lot of memory, it wears down the devices faster, uh, so they need to re be replaced faster, which is also not very great for the environment. Uh, we can all play a part in reducing the impact, uh, even if you're a designer, a developer, a site builder, a content editor, a project manager. So we all can do something, and I'm just going to show you what we can do. First and foremost, uh, the thing which has the most impact is video. Using video on your website is, is yeah, you have to really think about using videos because it can really add up. Uh, I've been guilty of myself. I've built a website for a travel agency uh, and it had a very cool video of a drone shot of Costa Rica looping over and over. So every visitor had to download the video in order to view the website, which was five megabytes per page load. So if, if you do one thing, just remove those out of playing looping background videos now. Uh, I think it's a fading trend, so that, that should be fine. Uh, and what should you do? Well, of course, you can replace it with text and images. Uh, text and images are easier to scan, easier to read, so maybe it's even better to use text and images instead of uh, videos. You can also use 
interactive SVG infographics. SVG is a scalable factor graphic. Um, and they are, uh, yeah, there's much less file size. So it's just a couple of kilobytes instead of a few megabytes. But that doesn't mean your website has to be boring. This is uh, SVG animation, just some JavaScript, HTML, SVG. It's made by Tom Miller. He just uh, made a code pen to show how what you can do with animation and SVG. So it still looks cool, but it doesn't take up uh, that much uh, megabytes. This is another one by Tom Miller. So just by use creatively using what's already available, SVG, JavaScript, CSS, you can create something like this. Uh, he has even more on his code pen. You should really check him out. What else can you do? You can optimize the images. Like I said, SVG is much smaller, so try to replace as much images with SVG. Uh, this works really well for flat images. Uh, it's not, not a great for photos. If you still need photos, of course, uh, SVG won't work. Uh, Drupal doesn't support SVG from core, but you can install a module. Uh, when you have this module installed, you can just upload a SVG as you would a JPEG or a PNG. As I said, SVG is very useful for illustrations, logos, or maybe icons. Is that I can use the elbow sneeze from the Rijkshuisstel. Uh, you can also optimize images, make sure they are displayed on the correct format. For example, if you have like an avatar picture, which is only shown 75 pixels width on your website, don't load in an image of 500 by 500 pixels and scale it down to 75. It's something I see a lot on websites. Just load the picture in on 75 by 75. Another thing is you can set the quality. Uh, I'll get back to this one. And you can use the responsive Im images module, which is already included in core. Uh, so this would serve up only images at the correct size when you're watching it on mobile, instead of loading up a desktop sized image if you're only watching it on a mobile phone. This is also a very important one, I think. You can use WebP. It's supported on all major browsers except for Internet Explorer 11, but if you still need to support that, then you have a different problem, I think. Um, and as of Drupal 9.2, you can convert to WebP with image styles. So this is very cool because then you can just, uh, your content editors can still use the JPEGs, the PNGs, and you just convert them uh, afterwards to WebP. And this reduces the size the average WebP size is 25 to 34% smaller compared to a JPEG. So if there's one thing you take away from this, it's just turn on the image styles for WebP and you already have a, a cleaner website. What else can you do? Uh, this is mostly for designers. When in doubt, leave it out. So try to take a minimalistic approach to designing and adding up elements to the website. Do you really need a new section on the home page? A new section brings a lot, a lot of images. Uh, is it something visitors want? Uh, and I think the mobile first, uh, the mo mobile first principle of designing is very helpful because it really makes you focus on what elements do I need on this website? Uh, and if, if I don't need it on mobile, do I really need it on the desktop? So mobile first approach is a very good way to go about designing your websites. There's also the question uh, I get asked a lot, using dark colors, does it help? Do you really need all to go, all to go dark mode? Well, it doesn't really necessarily hold us up. It only affects OLED, but OLED is becoming the de facto screen. So yeah. Uh, don't use per pure white on pure black. That's one thing you need to look out for because it's really strange on the eye. So use some off black or off white. And always give users the option to switch between dark and light mode because some people just prefer the light mode or it's they, they have something with their eyes, they need to watch it dark text and light uh, background. And then there's the question of which colors is the saves the most energy. Well, we start with black, obviously, but then we get red, which I found surprising. Then there's green blue and white. So if you want to really 
energy saving website, you should go for black and red. What else can you do? You can host your Drupal site with a green hosting provider. Uh, this is, I think, is becoming normalized, which is good, but you really have to look out because not every hosting party says they're green, but this is some sort of greenwashing, so you need to do some research. Or you can, uh, you can pick up a hosting provider which is part of the Green Web Foundation. They check them for you, and they have a lot of hosting providers that you can use. Another thing, this is more for the CX experts, the uh, customer journey. You can optimize the customer journey. So every unnecessary bounce wastes energy. If someone comes on your site, doesn't find what he looks, goes back. Uh, for example, I once wrote a blog about DuckDuckGo, the search engine. Uh, this ended up number one in Google, so there were actually people Googling DuckDuckGo in Google, and they came on our site, and they immediately went back because it wasn't DuckDuckGo, of course. So we had a lot of visitors, but they all had to download the page. So in the end, we had to kill it, uh, which saves a lot of energy. So ignore vanity metrics. Don't go for page view, but focus on conversion. What are your best converging pages? And don't look at page views, beca because as I said, like Dr. Go, they're not really doing anything. You can do a big cleanup, uh, remove unnecessary pages. Like I said, if a page doesn't do anything, maybe it's like an old news post from uh, 2004, which still s three or four people come monthly, just remove it because it doesn't add any value, but it only uh, uh, uses uh, unnecessary kilobytes, megabytes. Re remove unnecessary scripts. Maybe you've been tracking with Hotjar or uh, and uh, you have uh, like a chatbot that's, that's disabled, but they're still loading up the script, so you have to check are there any scripts and can we remove them? Also, always be caching. So make sure default Drupal caching system is turned on, which is already pretty good. But if you want to go even further, you can go for a more advanced caching with AdFag. It's a module, it's quite, um, quite specialistic. So you really know, need to know what you're doing, but you can really turn it up. You can also use a content delivery network, CDN. Uh, just make sure that your content is delivered locally. So for example, if you have a visitor from the United States, then they will get the web, uh, website served up from a server in the United States, which takes less time to travel, which takes up less electricity. Also, uh, the most content delivery networks do some extra image optimization. Uh, and if you take Cloudflare, for example, the, they have a free tier. So the, that's just free. And you can even use a Drupal module to, to connect it all. But then the question is, do these small changes really matter? It seems like really insignificant, a couple of kilobytes, but does it really matter? Well, I have here a use case, the website of the Enterprise Agency of the Netherlands, built by Dictu. And uh, so there's something called a website carbon calculator. And if you put it in your website, it will tell you how good or bad you're doing. So one day I put it in, and I saw, oh no, it's 83% 80, 80, uh, dirtier than other tested web pages, which is pretty bad, especially for an organization as, like us. We are trying to uh, get companies to be greener, be more sustainable, but our website is leaking CO2. So what was the problem? What, what can we do about this? Well, we're using a Drupal nine website with a decoupled Next.js front end using Next images, and we found out that the images were set to 100%, which is quite big. So what we did, we reduced them to 85%. As you can see, it's, it's very hard to see the difference. It's the human eye doesn't really register this, this quality loss. So uh, this is where we went for. And then I did this calculation. We had a reduction of 1.70 megabytes on the page. So the page was 1.70 megabytes smaller than it was. We did have uh, 70 million, 1.7 million 
visitors last year on, um, on our homepage. So we nearly saved 2 million megabytes. There's a calculation going around on the internet that one megabyte is 20 gram of CO2. Uh, it's very hard to pin it down correctly, but I think it's a, it's a good measuring point to go by. And what you get is a yearly savings of 40,000 kilograms CO2. So what is 40,000 kilograms CO2? You can fuel nine gasoline-powered passenger vehicles for one year. Or you can use five homes uh, energy for a whole year. Or you can charge your smartphone five million times. So as you can see, a small change, just setting, reducing the, the percentage of the quality to 85%, which was just a setting, it's just a simple setting, already has a huge impact. Uh, and the fun fact is that this data only relates to the home page, but the change was made side-wide. So you can imagine the impact of all the images, what it does, and how much you can reduce. Now, how to sell a sustainable website to your client, your manager, or your product owner? Well, a sustainable website is faster. It's a lighter page rate. You get optimized caching. And fast is good for SEO. So which what's not to like? Also, a sustainable website is more accessible. No auto-playing video. Uh, there's a, a WCHG rule that says you cannot have an auto-playing video uh, unless you can pause it. Uh, also, probably, you get a better contrast because you're using darker colors. It's also more user-friendly uh, because you have the optimized user journey and you have no more dead ends, no more news posts that are doing nothing for you. If you want to know more, I would recommend the Sustainable Web Design book. It's a very thin book. You can uh, read it in a couple of days. Uh, there's also a SUX network, Sustainable UX network. They are very active on LinkedIn. They have their own podcast. Uh, and there's even a W3C community, and they're working on uh, guidelines, standards. Uh, maybe in the future we even get a sustainability check as we get an accessibility check. I would like to thank you for listening. Has anyone any questions? It is truly, truly fascinating topic, indeed. You know, we all think on a daily basis on how much CO2 is produced by our car mm -hmm. or by the public transport, but yeah. indeed, not on a daily basis we think about the websites and how, how, <laughs> how the impact that they make on the ecology and on our beautiful planet. So, indeed, uh, guys, do you have any questions, please? All right, as there is no questions at the moment, I think that you will have still quite a bit of time during the day to, to, to talk about that. Sure. Thank you very much for joining us today and for a really, truly fascinating topic to, to look up. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I believe we still have couple of minutes till till the next talk so if you guys need to grab some water or coffee or tea or change the room please do so or if you want to stay with us please also feel free to <laughs>